This is Twit. We got to talk about the blockchain. No, no, no. This is not another company that's trying to make billions just by adding blockchain to their name. No, it's not another ICO. And no, it's not just another technology that tacks on blockchain into the PR release. This is all about something that I'm actually quite excited about, and that is using the blockchain to increase the security of provider data. Now, we have found in a, a story from CNET that a growing number of researchers are eventually finding that blockchain, real blockchain, not just a cryptocurrency technology, but the actual process behind creating a blockchain could make sharing and accessing data more efficient. Now, on Monday, we had five major healthcare organizations, which include Optum, United Healthcare, Quest Diagnostics, Multiplan, and Humana, and you've probably dealt with at least one of them, say that they are looking at integrating blockchain into their, their programs. In fact, they're all launching a pilot program to see if blockchain technology can keep health plan provider directories up to date and make sure that everything is HIPAA compliant. Now, I want to open this discussion with you, Curtis, because... This is something that we've bantered back and forth about on Twite, which is anytime you touch healthcare data, things become a bunch more sensitive because of HIPAA regulations and because of the massive penalties that can be applied if a company does not do its due diligence to secure customer information, especially sensitive information like healthcare information. Blockchain is one of these things that once you get away from the hype and once you divorce it from cryptocurrency, it's actually a fantastic system both for the provider to verify the records and for the customer to have singular access to the records. Does this actually make sense? Do you think that these companies actually understand what they're getting into when they say, we want to develop a blockchain pilot program? You know, I think that they probably do. And I can think of a couple of ways that they can go about in doing it. Uh, the simplest, the most obvious, involves a technique called data obfuscation. Uh, that's basically where you take the data, run it through an algorithm that changes it into something that can be processed like the original data, uh, but is not identifiable in any way back to the individual. Then when all of the processing is done, in this case, all of the blockchain uh, magic that has to go on, it can come back to the original owner, be de-obfuscated, and returned and used in its normal state. So it seems to me that if uh, if you're going to be going through this, and let me say now, I'm a big fan of blockchain for applications like this, then I think, you know, if I were doing it, obfuscation is the path I would walk down first. Right, right. Now, Lou, there is another question that we have to ask here, and that is, uh, you know, there's a there has been a tendency, especially this last year, just to throw blockchain into the mix and say, okay, that's like a magic bullet. I, I'm not suggesting that that's what this is, but just using the blockchain doesn't automatically make things HIPAA compliant, right? I mean, HIPAA compliant has, there, there is a standard of security and it's not just encryption, but there's also a division of what records are separate from what records. That still has to be addressed. I mean, just throwing everything in a blockchain doesn't make it better. Right. I think I think that, you know, that, that's interesting because blockchain can do just because it's distributed, it makes more, it does make it more secure because things are kind of split up and um, and again, makes it so that there's a single source of truth. So that's, again, really kind of a great uh, thing. But again, like you said, HIPAA compliance is a big thing. And I think what will end up happening, and this is just kind of uh, me kind of seeing what the future will hold with blockchain in healthcare, is the fact that most of these healthcare services or systems will essentially try to limit the network nodes um, for blockchain to more of a private-based network um, because then it'll allow them to, to make sure that it can be HIPAA compliant. And then that way they can encrypt it and make sure it's encrypted in transit. And, and anytime it goes off the chain, it's encrypted. And so I think that will ensure all that. And so you won't necessarily see the whole advantage of blockchain up front, which is, hey, I own my data and I get to I get to own it and then I get to give it to these healthcare systems when I want to. And I don't think that that's going to happen up front. I think it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be more locked down, more secure. So it does meet these compliance. And then um, there'll be other systems that are allowed to kind of go out to the, to, to the consumer themselves. I like that. Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a very good way to look at it. Now, Let's go ahead and give you an example of how this is supposed to work. Theoretically, theoretically, there's two problems that they're solving for. One, that is the synchronization of data between all the providers, P 
because that's actually a big problem, especially with HIPAA compliance and the fact that they have to keep such close tabs on the data. It's often not easy for organizations to share customer data because they're very, very concerned that they might accidentally violate HIPAA. Even an accidental HIPAA violation can cost them millions of dollars. On the patient side, they want to try to make records easier for patients to share. Right now, if you want to share your records between one doctor and another, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. Again, because of the HIPAA compliance issues, you do have to go to each doctor. You have to make sure that all the proper forms are signed. You have to make sure that the information is sent to the right place. And then you have to make sure that the receiving doctor is also HIPAA compliant. What they think, think they can do with the blockchain is because they're going to have everything in this distributed ledger, A, they can verify which records come from which organization. So they're going to have a, a foolproof way to be able to do that. And they can synchronize data across those different records. And even after they're synchronized, they can always go back to show the original records. So that, that's great on the provider side. On the customer side, because it is your block because it's your information, because you will have that particular block, you can share that block with a new doctor. That new doctor can look at the blockchain and verify that it came from the right sources, and therefore you reap the benefits as well. Theoretically, that's absolutely the way it's going to work. That's the way that they want it to work. That's the way they designed it to work. They just now have to figure out how to actually make that work. Uh, Lou, Curtis, I'm going to throw over to either of you first. Um, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, I know that's an open-ended question, but what's what's a bad a bad outcome here? Well, I, th I think there are a number of bad outcomes, but I, w I wanted to first, before I get to the bad news, look at one more thing where it could be some good news, uh, and that is th this blockchain. Uh, what if every one of the healthcare providers who touched your data? had to be part of that chain. Now, I know a number of years ago when I had a, a major health issue, when I was getting the bills back from the, the hospital, I was seeing lots of doctors and specialists on there that I never saw. Now, I had to take their word that they had somehow touched my data and entered, you know, offered some sort of opinion or judgment on it. But if, if there's a blockchain that they have to touch, then if they actually look at the data, it's part of the chain. Mm. And if they don't, it's part of the chain. So I think that could be really good. Now, having said that, I can also imagine that on the bad side, it's only so long before some of the medical scam artists start building their own medical blockchain farms. And suddenly you get miners out there running blockchains, proving, they say, that they have touched data, done great things, when all it's done is hit a server that's sitting in a container with a big honking air conditioner hanging off the back. Oh, my. You just had to bring that up, didn't you, Curtis? Thanks. I appreciate that. Lou, what about you? Do you have something, uh, something doom and gloom for us? Yeah. <laughs> So I think another thing is the fact that, you know, I think Curtis kind of alluded to this is is members of the blockchain. So I think, you know, this is going to probably start in your local area where hospitals can kind of, you know, uh, share data amongst themselves. But making this kind of, hey, I need, I'm flying to New York and and I'm going to the hospital or a doctor there, you know, can these particular providers also access that data? And most likely in the beginning, they're not going to be able to because it's it's not going to be, they're going to be part of that kind of chain themselves. And so that becomes the fact that you're going to have to standardize this and that might require some government intervention and some other compliance and other those types of things. So I think it's going to be a long road and I don't think it's going to happen right away. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the thing. I these companies saying that they are launching a pilot program to use the blockchain it does not mean that blockchain technology is inevitable, nor does it mean that it's going to happen soon. These companies are healthcare companies. They will move very, very slowly because they understand the problems with moving quickly and messing it up, especially if you're dealing with patient information. But both of you make some very good points, and both of you have some very good ideas about how this is going to be used. Curtis... I love the idea of the, the digital fingerprints. Everyone who has touched any of your health information, anyone who has touched any of your health billing gets recorded. And that can be verified across all the holders of the distributed ledger. That's fantastic. I mean, that's, that's actually a, a really good idea because it gives you, as the patient, the ability to sort of go back through your blockchain and say, okay, I recognize that. I recognize I don't recognize that. 
Let's find out where that came from. Uh, although I guess that's probably just a step up from looking at your medical bill because I've done that before and I couldn't understand anything that was put onto that record. So yeah, go figure.